Have you heard anything, Superintendent Gordon? No, not yet. Um, my guess is uh, she's probably, uh, you know, she's probably trying to log on right now. I haven't seen her yet. I think you should start the meeting just so Yeah, I think we're gonna just go ahead and get started and hopefully she'll join us. And like I said, I did reach out to her. So welcome to our school board meeting um, on today, September 8th. We'll open our meeting by uh, saying the Pledge of Allegiance and Director Shirtcliffe's going to lead us in that today. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America to the republic for which it stands one nation under god indivisible with liberty and justice for all thank you um superintendent Corden. thank you uh board members uh, great to see you tonight and uh, thanks to everybody for joining us tonight um in terms of the review of the agenda since this agenda was published last week um, the classified association membership has completed voting on um, the required ratification for the tentative collective bargaining agreement that you'll see in your packet pages 13 to 69. And uh, that's the one adjustment to the agenda since its publication. Thank you. Um, next up is our student representative report from RHS student leadership student, Marin Gray. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Like she said, my name is Marin Gray. I'm a senior and the ASB co-president at Roseburg High School this year. I'm just thrilled to be able to talk to you about what it's been like for our first back to school week so far. So we did something new this year. We had two link days for the freshman and sophomore classes before all the other grades arrived. Since last year we were online, not unlike the freshman class, the sophomore class also didn't have a whole lot of an opportunity to get acquainted with the campus. So link crew ran assemblies and link group activities to make sure that these students were comfortable walking around campus and comfortable connecting with one another as well. Another new thing that we started this year is our advisory period, which is a shorter period that occurs every other Wednesday. And this is separated by grade level. So what that means is we get grade targeted lessons. For example, ninth grade lessons might focus more on adjusting to high school, whereas 12th grade lessons might focus more on gearing our students towards success after high school. It's also an opportunity to check in and connect with the students and rebuild what was lost socially and emotionally after a year of online learning. The advisory teachers are also assigned to each grade level and will stick with that grade level throughout all four years of high school. So the idea is that these students will have a consistent staff member connection throughout their high school years. Overall, we're really just getting back into the groove of what normal school looks like and what normal will feel like this year. As far as the leadership class goes, we are preparing for the Senior Sunrise event this Saturday, bright and early at six in the morning. And we're really excited for this for two reasons. One, because it's a really fun opportunity for the class of 2022 to get together and celebrate the beginning of our senior year by watching the sunrise together. And hopefully we'll get to celebrate at the end of the year by watching the sunset on our senior year together as well. And for the leadership class, personally, we are super excited because over the past year, we haven't had a, little, a whole lot of leadership sponsored events that we've been able to host. So I can attest that we are very, very excited and uh, hopeful that we'll have continue to have events like this that we can put on for the school. Along that line, we are definitely preparing to be adaptable and flexible with our events this year while still rebuilding school spirit in as many ways as possible. Uh, on another note, despite some bumps in the road with the smoke and whatnot, we are getting back into the swing of things with sports this year. Varsity Volleyball won their game with South Eugene in just three sets last Thursday, and JV2 won against Thurston. I learned today actually from a classmate that JV2 hasn't lost a game yet this year, including the tournament that they had over the weekend. The game, unfortunately, against Grants Pass was canceled yesterday, and the varsity football game that was scheduled for last Friday was moved to Saturday in Cottage Grove due to the smoke. Despite all of these quick changes and pivots, we did win 23-7. to uh, Freshmen won and JV lost their games on Thursday, and the varsity away game that is against Mountain View is scheduled for Friday, but we're still watching the air quality, and it could actually be moved to Saturday and then, so we're still staying up on that. Boys soccer is currently undefeated and girls are one and one. Unfortunately, that game on Tuesday was also canceled due to smoke. Uh, we had our first cross country meet also in Roseburg last week. The girls won and the boys placed second. And I talked to Mr. Ekman today and he said they're just so happy to be back running and competing again. The second meet was canceled. I bet you can't guess why. And we're hoping to travel to Western Oregon this weekend. 
I think the main takeaway, honestly, so far is that we have had plenty of opportunities to practice our flexibility and our patience. But despite all these challenges as a student, I can say that we're just so, so happy to be back on campus. That's pretty much the extent of my update for you today. So thank you for your time. Thank you, Marin. It is exciting to see all the things um, going on. I was at that first cross country meet and it was, it was great to see all the kids there. Um, next item is the approval of the consent agenda. Um, the board received a copy of that in their email previously. And so we just need to approve and vote on the consent agenda as published. I will entertain a motion. I move to approve the consent agenda. I'll second. Thanks. Uh, any questions about what's follow up? Okay, all in favor of approval of the consent agenda as currently published, say aye. 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 <clears throat> Thank you. Um, next up, we have time for public participation. Um, Assistant Superintendent Ni nee will be coordinating that, and I'm going to just turn the time over to her to explain procedure and protocol. Thank you, Chair Larson. So the procedure for if you would like to participate is to use the raise your hand function. You can find that under reactions in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. Um, please keep comments respectful and adhere to the two minute time limit. At two minutes, the alarm will go off and we ask you to wrap up your comments. At this time, Chair Lawson, we do not have any hands raised. Chair Larson, you're, okay. you're muted. <laughs> I've gotten so good at muting because, you know, when you live in a house with a lot of kids, you never want to be. <laughs> There's always a lot going on. Uh, sorry about that. Well, let's move on with approving the agreement with the Roseburg chapter of OSEA and um, Director Freeman. I think that's. Yeah, you bet. <clears throat> I'll get us started and then I'll turn it over to um, Director Lee. Uh, so I want to just give a huge uh, thank you to our um, uh, classified association uh, executive board who um, worked diligently to support their members. I also want to give um, a lot of kudos to our subcommittee, and that was chaired by Director Lee, and that also included Director Johnson and Director Bishop. Uh, we had um, some pretty uh, interesting nights, and through it all, I believe we um, ended in a really good place that both the association and uh, the district can be really proud of uh, this contract. So having said that, I'd like to turn it over to Director Lee if he has a few comments. Well, I, 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 I think I largely rely upon uh, uh, Mr. Freeman's uh, expertise and evaluation. We had help here uh, with the uh, legal team from Portland uh, we were interested in making sure that we did something that was consistent with what we did with the uh, licensed and uh, administrative staff. We wanted to uh, deal with uh, what's happened with the economy. Uh, we wanted to um, also uh, deal with the uh, challenges that the uh, minimum wage uh, causes and uh, some of our lesser hourly paid staff uh, so that we worked out a, a, a compromise adjustment to uh, income, uh, which gave a greater percentage uh, income to the lowest paid people. We think that'll be of help to us in, in recruiting and retaining uh, staff in the future. So I, I, th I think it really worked out uh, pretty well. We uh, held the line on the uh, language issues about uh, uh, how, how work went and uh, um, and we managed to do it without a whole lot of bad feelings. So uh, it's, it's good when our negotiation works out that way. Thank you very, very much for all of your work and for um, the members of that um, association as well for their hard work. Um, they are so critical to our schools 
working. We couldn't do it without their uh, great efforts. And um, many of the classified staff have made a big difference in the lives of my uh, children. And I'm, I'm grateful for the work that they do every day for the kids here in Roseburg. So that being said, the chair will entertain a motion to approve the agreement with the Roseburg chapter of OSEA. A motion. <laughs> Thank you. We have a first. Do we have a second? I'll second. All right. Any further questions for either Director Lee or for Director Freeman? All right. Hearing none, all in favor of approving this agreement? Say aye. 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 Great. Thank you. Uh, next is Resolution 21-2211, Attendance Awareness Month, uh, Superintendent Cording. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. In your packet, board members, uh, page uh, 71 or 70 to 71, you'll find a resolution uh, relative to attendance. Uh, it's a National Attendance Month, and we'd like to uh, get your approval and support of this resolution that prioritizes the significant impact of um, attendance and the correlation between not only academic achievement, but also belonging and, and becoming part of a community that attendance uh, helps. Um, it fits well with our strategic plan to make sure our kids are seen and heard and understood and uh, would uh, seek your approval of this resolution. Okay, the chair will entertain a motion that we approve the resolution 21-2211 to uh, participate and increase awareness of the importance of attendance in our schools. So move. For the second. I think Director Johnson just seconded there. Okay, uh, great. Howard was on, on mute there. So yeah, are you okay, <laughs> any, are you okay Director Johnson? Any questions, comments? Okay, all in favor of this approving this resolution, say aye. 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 All right. Aye. <laughs> okay, item number three, a request for approval of a dust abatement system for the RHS wood shop. Um, I don't know who wants this one first. Cheryl, are you gonna kick this one off? I will kick this one okay. off. Um, so I'm here uh, in Tracy Groff's uh, continued absence. I've asked Mike Jardine to step in and help me with uh, project managing services. And he's on the call tonight to help uh, answer any technical questions that you'll have that I will be able to answer. So uh, the dust collection system at the high school is uh, very old and it is in need of replacement. We did bring an engineering firm to have the project engineered. We advertised statewide and still received just one bid, uh, which does seem a bit high at $433,000, but it is a very, very specialized system. I did put some details in an email that you received. It, it calls for its extensive system of ducting along with insulation that is specially designed to be a smooth surface so it doesn't collect debris that would um, cause any obstructions that might be a fire hazard. Um, beyond that, I'm going to go ahead and have you direct your questions to Mr. Jardine. I will tell you that the high school planned for this replacement and planned for it to be an expensive replacement. They did set aside $500,000 from their last year, uh, Measure 98, also known as high school success, specifically for this project. Um, and so it'll be grant funded. Do you guys have any questions about this project? Um. I do, but let's go ahead and um, maybe get the motion on the floor and then we can ask for some questions before voting. Um, so the chair will entertain a motion to approve the purchase of a dust abatement system for the RHS wood shop. I'll move to approve. Do we have a second? A second. Okay. Um, I, I'll kick off the question. You said that the price is 433 exclusive of the electrical plumbing demolition and the concrete plat pad and we've set aside five hundred thousand dollars so those four components do they fit within the remaining sixty seven thousand dollars that we've set aside it should be very very close to that um 
I will also, and if we go over, they can use their current year measure 98 to backfill, or we can use some maintenance funds. We expect maybe those items to be about 75,000, so it's very, very close. At the same time, Mr. Jardine, um, we're asking for approval of the project as it stands. And Mr. Jardine is working for is working for um, is working with Uncle Sheet Metal on perhaps some alternative pieces that could considerably lower the cost of the project. Of course, we'd want those approved by our engineer. So I have a question when I can. Yeah, go right, jump right in. So Cheryl, when did we start talking about this? Was it a year ago or um, a couple years ago? Uh, the high school came uh, and identified the need to us uh, about a year ago. We may have discussed it in Building Insights earlier than that. Uh, we took our projects uh, one at a time. There were several that they wanted done, including the ag building behind the high school. So we were, like I said, we were doing these one at a time to see what monies could still be set aside. I did come to the board about three months ago and let you guys know that this would be coming. Okay, maybe that was it. I just wanted to go on the record. I, I'm disappointed there was just one bid. Really disappointed that just one person, one company bid it. I, you know, that's a, it's a pretty big job. Uh, we so. tried, um, we initially called around to several vendors, asked about their interest in the project. Um, several indicated that they were interested, but went to our states, uh, advertised statewide to try to get more. We're seeing, you know, it's the same supply chain and busy, busy people that we're seeing everywhere is my only explanation for just one company's interest in the project. Oh, I get it. I understand. Yeah. But uh, we don't go ahead. We don't really have anything to compare with then, right? Well, I mean the, the projects would be price wise, this is the only price we received, but it was bid on a set of um, engineered plans. So the product would be the same regardless of who we got it from. Okay. This, this, this project is very uh, specialized. There's not a lot of people that do it. Uh, um, this, the whole system in itself, the build out on it is the components are very specialized. Um, after talking with Umpwa and trying to value engineer some of this out and get the price down to where I thought it was reasonable. To be honest, when I looked at it at the start, I thought it was a typo. And then I started diving into it more and more and more and all the components to the dust collector system, um, they're very Mike, you've muted yourself. How's that? Can you hear me? Everything after they're all very specialized. <laughs> oh, so it's a very specialized system, and there's not a lot of them that are being installed and built around our area. So to actually get a bidder on this at all, I'm act, I'm I'm pretty surprised that that Umpqua even bid it. To tell you the truth, uh, very specialized, very hard to get. Not a lot of people that, that do it. Um, not a lot of people that will take on the liability to do one either, to tell you the truth. So after looking at it and comparing it to other systems that have been installed and talking with other suppliers and, and other mechanical contractors, the price is there um, with all the pricing that's going through the roof with, with the current situation in the market and uh, manpower issues and everything else. I, I'm, I'm actually very happy with it after I've revisited it and, and went through it with Umpqua. Okay. I think Howard had a question and then Charles. Uh, Director Johnson, you are muted. How's that? Good. I have a question about the uh, guarantee. Also, I have a question about safety. Do they have a heat sensor and a clock sensor? If that, that system gets clogged up, that there's some kind of warning that goes off. Because they will catch on fire real quick. I guess that's for me. So um, let me back up a little bit. I am not 
as in depth as in this project as I probably should be. I've only been in, in involved with it for a few weeks now, but there is a monitoring system as far as fire. I do know that um, as, as far as fire and obstruction, I know there's a, there's some sort of a monitoring in there. I'm not exactly up to date on the extent of it, but um, I know there's warnings, uh, a particulate level monitors, some things like that. Will be will we be able to sell the residual product on open market? The dust or the the shavings you would. That is correct. It, dust and shavings. Yeah, it will gather them. It, it will gather them. So if, if there was a way to to market them and sell them, I'm I'm I know you could you could get rid of it. Yeah. I would like to see us explore the possibility of being able to sell the residual product that comes through that abatement system. There is a tremendous market for it right now because trees are hard to come by. So therefore when sawmills are cutting up those trees into logs and lumber, there's a very high return on investment for the residual. Charles, Dr. Lee. He's still on. You know, I think Director Lee actually popped off. Hopefully he'll be okay. coming back on. When he comes back, hopefully, um, I don't know what his question is. Um, I hesitate to vote when I know he had a question. I have so, another question. Okay, so Director Cotton. So when will this be, uh, when will this get started and when's the time frame? We can get started after we have board approval and we issue a letter of intent to proceed. Uh, the only thing that might um, hold up the project a bit is if there are aspects of value engineering where we can achieve some economies and savings. But we can go ahead and move forward with the project as it is very soon. Uh, it does require access to the classroom. A lot of the work will be done off site. So it'll also then have to be scheduled around and may need to be done, say, over the winter break and spring break. That was my question too. Thanks, Rod. Um, well, I... Chair Larson, I, I uh, just sent a message to Director Lee waiting to hear back. He was on here and blinked off, so he might be trying to get back in right now. Yeah, I'd like to just hold off just because I, um, I know he had a question, and um, I think it's important that that get answered. Um, so maybe we can move into the report and circle back around to the final vote. Yeah, I think that sounds, if that's good with you, that's, I think that's uh, okay. a good call. Can I, Let's ask go if, and do that. can I ask if Director Primitz had a question? I saw her kind of go like this. Oh. Yeah. I just wondered, um, how old is our current system that we have? It would be original to the Votex building. And I might be, no, is that 60s or 70s? 70s, I think, early 70s. So the longevity of, I mean, if we are investing now, this should last for a long time, this, this well, new system. The system that we're putting in now is, is a 180 from the system that's in there. The system that's in there is, is an exhaust system, not a dust co collection system. This is more of a uh, half a filter particulate, clean the air and scrub it. The other one is more of an exhaust, pull all the, all the, the overcasts out and, and compile it. So okay. we're actually upgrading the system itself and, and the other one is wore out. Okay, thank you. All right, oh, Charles is back. Director Lee, did you have a question about the system? Well, I, I, I missed out on most of what you guys talked about. Uh, uh, the, the, the school district computer got unstable and uh, I'm, I'm on an office computer now. 
the 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 bid is excluding uh, concrete work and a whole lot of stuff. So it looks to me like it's it's really likely that this project is going to wind up going over the five hundred thousand dollars. Isn't that true? There is that possibility. Uh, Mr. Gurney is exploring value engineering options with uncrushed sheet metals, so there may be some costs in the project that can be saved. If the project does go over, it may be over five or ten thousand. We're thinking seventy-five thousand for the things that were excluded from the, the bid price, and that can either be absorbed by our general maintenance or this year's current measure ninety-eight funding. And and I wasn't sure why this system was as unique as it is apparently being. I I would assume that the that the wood shops in all modern uh, uh, high school buildings have got similar systems, and and I would assume that we've got similar systems in uh, woodworking. I mean, do they have a similar system up there in Wilbur where they? Uh, where they make the furniture for the fast food restaurants. Uh, it's all got to be set up so that the the sawdust and stuff doesn't get clogged up and doesn't doesn't explode. I'm I'm not sure why it's why we're talk calling this one unique. Mike, do you have any thoughts to add on that after you unmute? So I maybe I maybe I misspoke. So what I mean by being unique is the dust collector itself requires a certain type of ducting, insulation, uh, banjo ties, everything to fit into that dust collector itself is unique in the fact that it'll only receive a certain kind of component. So that, that's what I meant by unique. It's, it's like the Apple computer of uh, dust collectors. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> But on the other hand, it's we, we can't have a wood shop without a dust collector. So um, I think that's our choice, probably. Um, well, and uh, I mean, this is really what those Measure 98 funds were intended for, um, to improve our CTE programs and to make sure we had um, the equipment and things we needed to help those uh, be successful. Um, any further questions before we have a vote? Okay, seeing none, all in favor of approving uh, the approval of the dust abatement system for the RHS woodshop, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. All right. Uh, all right, our next thing is a superintendent's report, um, including enroll enrollment and finance by Superintendent Corden. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, enrollment and finance information will be found in your packets. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Uh, I have a, a slide deck I'd like to show tonight. Put this in present mode, possibly. There we go. Thinking, thinking, there we are. All right. Well, it's sure good to have our children back in our schools. And uh, Marin did a great job tonight. Um, highlighting the, the opportunity it is to have our kids back in school and the blessing it is to have our kids back in school. Tonight, I wanna really hit on three main topics. Uh, we've got our kids back and that is what uh, has been our North Star of making sure we can open up our schools full-time in person. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about enrollment and uh, just some kudos for our staff members who have done a great job in getting to this point. I'm going to show a quick video. It's about a minute and a half that was put together. I want to give a shout out to Chelsea Duncan, who did a great job putting this together for us. And this will kick off the uh, superintendent report. My hope this year for students is that they find a goal of learning and connection again, that we can help them foster good relationships in a safe environment. Last year and even the year before that, we are constantly changing and adapting circumstances and just realizing that those shifts are going to happen, uh, that what isn't going to change is the consistency of how adults feel about them and how much we care about them. Welcome back students. I'm sure it's been exciting to see you back on our campuses. We really enjoyed seeing your excitement to see your old friends and watch so several of you meet new friends. Please take advantage of this year and this opportunity and uh, truly make it one of the best years that you've ever had. I want them to know that they're safe at school. I want them to feel secure 
I want them to feel the joy of being with others and confidence that they can do, grow, and learn. I just want them to feel like it's family at school. My hope oh, that hold on. Is it was good, but I don't think we'll do it a second time. So um, really, I just want to start a little bit about what we've focused on. And I want to give kudos to the board and our staff for really, um, like I said, our North Star has been getting our kids back to school full time, safely in person. Um, our focus really has been in terms of the successful opening. Uh, making sure that our, we're thinking and prioritizing health and safety. We've talked about this. This is year three of the pandemic, really, because, um, of course, we had last year, but oftentimes we forget about the, the year previous and um, what the spring looked like. And it has been our intent to make sure that we're thinking about the overall community health, our staff's health, and our students' health, um, not on the political divides around COVID-19 that are certainly here you know in our community and beyond and nor the health and safety mandates from the health department really our focus has been on our kiddos and it is so good to have them back um we've also prioritized making sure we're connecting with kids and also really prioritize student learning this year we know we've got kids that are um have had a less than desirable um for many of them experience and uh, so many people have done so great and so many kids have done great but it hasn't been ideal and our staff's done an awesome job with that but we're really prioritizing student learning as well um, we'll talk a little bit tonight about parent choice and um, making sure that we're centering around kindness with you know the new mandates that have come down around masks and vaccines to give you an idea where we're at enrollment wise i touched touched on this a little bit last time we had a board meeting um, you know, at the end of that 2021 year, this last year, we were down pretty significantly with enrollment. We're up about 400 kids. We had uh, some more students enroll today, um, uh, right after this was put together. Um, we're up about 400 students, a little under 400. Um, still not to the enrollment we had in 1920, but uh, the district has had some fluctuations around enrollment, which has been, um, which has been pretty typical. But it, we are happy to see that with schools open and um, the plan we put together to support families and students that they're here and they're returning. Um, and how they're returning is interesting this year. We certainly have a lot of kids back in person, which is wonderful, but we also have some virtual options that are really worth noting. And, um, you know, it's, it's really worth noting that we, we planned for and developed and were able to successfully launch a new school this year. This is uh, the Roseburg Virtual School. Uh, home of the bumblebees here. That was the institution ID several months ago, the board approved. Uh, we have 150 students. We've actually planned for 150 and have 150 right now, K-5. Uh, and this has been a really amazing, um, amazing program. Really great things are happening there. And a huge shout out to Danny Jardine and Michelle Nee who have uh, been instrumental in getting this um, school up and moving well. At the secondary level, um, where Apex has been our platform, but again, all of these options are not standalone. Uh, all these options are taught um, in a way that makes sure it's kid focused and uh, allows our staff to be connecting with our kids. In terms, I wanna talk just for a little bit about um, COVID, uh, it wouldn't be um, appropriate probably not to talk about this. It is part of what we, uh, daily are working on and, and dealing with, uh, just to give the board an update on a few things. Our operations team has done a super job. Um, we actually are uh, hiring some additional help. Um, and part of the reason we're doing that is the uh, Douglas Public Health Network then uh, have really had a busy several months, uh, several year, uh, almost several years, full year of trying to manage cases and quarantines. Um, we are, we have, uh, we did a lion's share of the work for our um, families last year, and we're going to continue to do that as they're pretty overwhelmed with things. And so um, we're continuing to reach out to families that have quarantine issues uh, in their own homes and help families understand what that pathway back looks like, when their students can come back and how to safely get back. Uh, it's, worth, it's worth noting that you know, we really um, had no evidence to spread last year. 
Um, we have had some positive cases this year. Uh, those are happening outside the school so far as we can tell. Um, and we're continuing to follow the health and safety requirements that allow us to keep in person. It is also worth noting, and I may have mentioned this before, I apologize if it's redundant, that the process for quarantine is quite different this year. The health authority has adjusted some of its um, requirements around quarantining and the benefit for our kiddos and families is we'll see far fewer quarantines. In fact, we really won't see many quarantines related to school this year. If there's a positive case, and if a school district, which we are, is fo are following the health and safety requirements, the positive student will be in isolation. We really won't be quarantining. The only case of a quarantine in school will be if a, a student or adult is experiencing symptoms in that classroom. So again, following these health and safety uh, requirements has helped us and will help us keep more consistency with kids staying in school and keeping school open. Um, in terms of notification, I, I thought it was worth mentioning to the board. Um, we had a four tiered layered communication last year. We really tried to focus on transparency with the community to make sure that we were very transparent when there was a positive case. Um, that communication uh, was relatively complex in the fact that we had to do some internal communication, some individual uh, phone calls with parents uh, to let them know their students would be in quarantine. and. When that process was completed, it was uh, some internal communication to that building again, and then to the whole to the whole district. This year, how we're going to move forward with this is when there's an exposure, um, we are going to do a daily notification for that specific building that there's been a positive case, and then, but not um, a notification to the whole district like we did last year. We will starting this Friday though do a roundup of all cases district wide on Friday for families. Um, I will say this, uh, staffing has been a challenge, but I want to give a shout out to the staff who's really done an incredible job. I, <laughs> as we kick the year off in an all staff meeting, I shared this Peter Drucker quote I've loved. Uh, he said this years ago, uh, you can talk about all the strategic planning you want, our strat plan we've talked about a lot, but like he wow. said, and I think he's right, that culture eats strategy for breakfast. You have to have a culture in your organization where people lean into what your culture is. And I I want to thank our staff who've done a great job. We've had some staffing shortages. I'll talk about some here in just a minute. Um, I think we're going to deal with these on an ongoing basis, at least in the short term. And we've needed to do some redistribution of duties and assignments. Uh, we've, we've taken some people out of their current locations in order to provide consistency for kids. And I want to uh, let our staff know and let the board know how proud I am our staff of being professional and keeping our eye on making sure that we're keeping consistent for kiddos and families. Um, I'm gonna talk just for a minute about vaccines. Um, the vaccination conversation around, uh, really around the state and the, and the nation has been one that's been contentious. And I think we have developed a plan that is very sensible. Um, it focuses on safety, but it also focuses on the foundational importance of religious freedoms and also the medical rights that people have in terms of exceptions. And I would preface all of this by saying um, there's been a lot, of, a lot of talk in many organizations in the public sector currently around staffing shortages. Um, as we've been out working with staff, I really feel strongly we've developed a plan that um, will not have us lead to significant staffing shortages as a result of the vaccine. Uh, we have a process um, uh, and a, a platform that allows uh, staff to easily um, submit vaccination records or submit exceptions for medical or religious reasons. Um, and those exceptions also are followed by some additional safety precautions that'll keep our kids and staff safe and also will allow us to maintain consistency in our buildings in the event of a positive case. We do, our, our probably our largest operational challenge of today, if you're asking me today, is probably around uh, a current shortage of bus drivers. Um, this has led to some frustration in our community. I want to just publicly acknowledge this and apologize to our parents whose kids have been on the bus too long. 
Uh, we had parents call and uh, in frustration that they weren't sure where their kids were at. Their kids were on the bus too long. Uh, I will say that uh, uh, a few of us have been in contact uh, with first student, our provider, in terms of uh, a demand that they meet the obligations to um, fulfill their agreement. Uh, we're trying to help out where we can. Um, we are having to do some potential rescheduling right now of uh, athletic events um, and potentially extracurricular activities. We're looking for some options around other busing options that we can get kids places. Uh, we certainly want to make sure that our kids aren't disadvantaged because of the shortage. Um, but it, it is presenting a current problem. I will say that our local um, service, uh, Tanya in specific, has been fantastic. I think the issue is more um, as an organization trying to um, remind them what their obligations are to make sure that we can maintain this critical service to get our kids to and from school safely and also in a timely manner and fulfill the obligations of uh, additional things like extracurricular and um, athletic events. I'll just end with this. Um, it does kind of take a village, if you will. Um, um, we're actually reading a book as a leadership team by Mike Robbins called We're All in This Together. And uh, we really are all in this together. And I want to thank the board for um, your consistency and um, in, in helping us get the year started. I want to thank our families and our kiddos for being adaptable, uh, as we've already seen some pivots and shifts with you know, certain things. Uh, and I appreciate the privilege of working here in this community and, um, and seeing our kids thrive. So thank you. Happy to add, uh, host any questions if you have any. I had one question. How are we doing on substitutes? Is there a substitute teacher shortage with the ESD or are we okay in that regard? Director Freeman, you wanna uh, address that? Yep, absolutely. Uh, so um, the answer is yes. Uh, just like in every other position where um, our substitute pool is smaller than it has been in the past. Uh, the ESD is transitioning to a uh, different substitute provider uh, that has a reputation for recruiting and uh, retaining substitutes. They also have some incentive programs for substitutes. So our hope is that we can build that pool. But um, so far, I have not heard of any unfilled positions, but of course the year is um, pretty early. Anyone else have questions for Superintendent Corden? Feel free to just jump in. Yeah, Director Lee. Um, last early last summer, we were happy because the, the six foot uh, spacing among students got reduced down to three, and now people are talking about the uh, the new variant being so much more transmissible. Are we going with three feet or six feet or what? What is this, the social spacing rule now? Yeah, so the health authority has updated that. Um, of course, you know all of this is a you know we we we're leaning on their expertise as epidemiologists and virologists. Um, so I'll, I can give you a little bit of background on this. When we looked at quarantines last year in the county, we had a really low incident rate of students we quarantined that came down positive. And so I think as people looked at that, the disruption and also kind of what the return was on the mass quarantines, um, the, the Oregon Health Authority felt confident that if we would remain masked, that three feet would be appropriate. Mm -hmm. And so the current guidance says that if students from, are remain masked, inside. Of course, this doesn't happen during certain parts of the day, including lunch, where students aren't masked. Uh, that, and it's not applicable outside either. Um, that's, that it would be enough to limit the spread. So it's a three feet masking rule. Now, that being said, um, the, the current guidance on vaccines shifted the calculus a little bit for those on those who were not vaccinated. And so those who aren't vaccinated currently will, or will seek an exception, their, their uh, additional kind of layered um, responsibility is to keep six feet to the extent possible. Okay. Does that help? Okay. Yep. Now, is that just the teachers then that 
maybe are operating under an exception or that are that are responsible to keep six feet away? This, this uh, Director Kermis, this would be for any staff. It could apply to an administrator or a licensed staff, classified staff. Um, the, the additional layered mitigation is this, that there's some self-screening that would happen, but that's really applicable for all staff. Uh, if staff feel well enough to come to the building and they may have a COVID symptom, which could be a sore or a you know, scratchy throat, uh, they, can, they can take a test, a Binax test, either do one at Walgreens, their provider, or we can provide here. The six feet space would be applicable for all, for all staff. Okay. And we, you know, in working with children, this is the thing that we, we uh, know, the practical reality is there's times in which that spacing varies. If you're teaching a kindergarten class, uh, was in one today, it's tricky to sometimes keep six feet in those. It's not, um, we're not having staff put a six foot hula hoop around themselves and walk around. That's not the intent. Um, it's just to make sure we can keep our kids safe, our staff safe, limit spread, and keep our schools open. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, individual reports by directors. I'll just start at the top of my screen. Um, Director Shirtcliffe. I don't have anything at this time. Um, Director Cotton. Um, yesterday I watched, oh yeah, I watched um, the governor and uh, Colt Gill speak. I don't know if anybody else watched it. But then later in the day, um, um, and I just, I pulled this article up on Oregon Live. I'm not sure what it means. It says, um, Oregon school chief asked students to try not to gather outside of school of hours, not to gather outside of school hours. What does that mean? Maybe the super. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm happy to, I'm happy to take that. I did also watch that press conference. Um, so these were this these were uh, I think the word were like additional health and they were I don't have the off the top of my head they were essentially um, advisory health metrics I think is what they called them yeah. advisory health measures um, this was this uh, they essentially what happened here operationally for us not a whole lot changes we moved all of our open houses and parent teacher conferences to Zoom this year anyway that was one of the recommendations. They did ask to limit things like extracurricular activities. Really, it's about the spread of the virus. Um, I don't see us, uh, we, we, we're not making an adjustment in OSAA activities and those kind of things. Uh, we think it's important to have kids have a, a more normal year. I think part of this was, you know, for directed toward families that may be, you know, having parties and kids together. Um, again, they're advisory. Some of this is, doesn't change operationally what we do in school. I think it's really, I, th I believe was intended to ensure kids can have a consistent year without, you know, having to look at a potential closure again. But that doesn't change much for us. Okay, good. Because, you know, we, some of us have complained about the communication from the state level. This is kind of it. Like, what the heck is, you know, if you're going to say something, it needs to be, we all need to understand what you're saying. Yeah. So anyway, it's it was crazy. a surprise to us as well. Uh, I know. You know, and so, but a good a good example of how communication needs to improve. I we did have to do a little bit of cleanup with parents and staff who were like, "What does this mean?" So, I think that continue we continue to advocate for more clear communication on these. Yeah, meetings. I understand you guys are doing great locally. It's it's just crap from the state. It's just crazy. Uh, anyway, I'm done. <laughs> okay, thank you, Director Johnson. I Oh, you're muted again. How's that? I have nothing to add that will benefit the children tonight. Thank you. <laughs> Director Bishop. You know, we're coming into a, a weird time where we're all hoping that these uh, COVID numbers are going down and, you know, there's, we're seeing some early signs of that, which is great, um, but it's still very much here. Um, you know, the National Guard 
is at the hospital. FEMA is at the hospital. Indian Health Services is at the hospital. Um, we're still in the thick of this. We're not out of this. Cooler, um, more calm minds need to uh, be held at this, uh, this time when we're in the middle of it. It's not time to quit. That's all I have. Thank you. Um, going down my screen, Director Krimitz. Yeah, my husband's name is on there because I couldn't get on the Zoom except for on his computer. Um, but I just, uh, I've been trying to get uh, just maybe an ongoing um, number when cases do arise in the schools, just in our school, not the not the whole um, Douglas County numbers, just our school children. How, if we're getting cases, can you get those numbers to us? And if they are hospitalized, I've, I've kind of asked for that from Dr. Uh, Dannenhofer, um, but just haven't gotten that yet. And I just, um, specific numbers are, I kind of like to see. Now you said something about on Fridays that you would do a report, uh, um, Superintendent Karen, for, uh, for the families to let them know at the end of the week if there were any issues or, um, I just, I would like to know that too. Um, maybe you'll send that to us as well, but I'd like a little bit more information on that. If, if these kids are being hospitalized, if they're, if it's quickly, are they recovering quickly and, you know, back in the swing of things, just, just more of, um, a real picture of our school kids. Yeah, so Director Kermis, we can we can definitely loop you into the Friday communication for sure. It won't have hospitalizations or recovery. It's going to have positive cases, and we haven't in the past we haven't um, we haven't included the amount of quarantine kiddos, um, but it's mostly going to be positive cases. We can loop you into that. I would I would continue to kind of ask Dr. Dannenhofer for a, a maybe more detailed report of what I can see relative to hospitalization and recovery. Okay, because we don't we don't ever know if our kids are in the hospital. It's it's not there, something that there we are also, know. And there are also HIPAA laws where we can't necessarily know. Um, okay. okay. Privacy like healthcare privacy. Okay, so just just numbers though is that would be part of it. Yeah. yeah, we can certainly loop you in. It, it will have positive cases, kind of a recap on the week. Again, it won't have quarantines, which we're still seeing a number of quarantines um, outside of school, but it'll have the amount of positive cases um, that we've been able to identify, if you will. Um, okay. We do have situations at times, is it a possibility that there could be a positive case and the parents holds them out of school? We may not know that exactly, but for the ones that we're aware of, we are going to be communicating those again to the community and we'll loop the board into those as well. Okay, thank you. You bet. Um, Director Lee. <clears throat> Not a lot. Um, I've, I've talked in the past about uh, how much I favor local decision making regarding school issues and how frustrating it's been to have uh, minute directives coming down from the state. Um, and I feel that way very strongly as a, as a uh, I guess over the years, my my observation of how decision works or doesn't work. On the other hand, we have a situation where the legislature here gave the governor uh, authority, and I don't think this is a situation where I want to start a revolution. Um, so I think I think we are bound by what the uh, what the government has been doing, and that. Uh, saves us from having to make what might otherwise be a kind of a tough decision. It's, it's entertaining to me uh, as a student of government to see how these things are working out. And uh, I wanna pay attention to, to the input I get from all sorts of different people. Um, but I'm, I'm satisfied that, uh, that this district is doing the reasonable thing at this time. 
Um, that's all. Thank you. Yeah, um, I don't have much to add other than I am, it's wonderful to see the kids back in school and I am grateful for our staff and how hard they're working. And um, yeah, thank, I'm just glad that we're back to a somewhat more normal school year. So thank you. Our next meeting uh, is a work session that will be held via Zoom at 6 p.m. on September 22nd. Um, I did see someone had their hand raised uh, public participation is actually in the middle of the meeting, but if you want to um, email uh, Assistant Superintendent Nee or um, members of the board, we'd be happy to talk to you that way, or you can call the district office tomorrow morning. All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening.